Hi guys, so today I have the Diane Press Halloween Treat Bag Stamps and Die Kit to share with you. It's something new they brought to HSN for the August Craft Day, um, now available there. Uh, they did some of these items free of charge from our review, and of course all opinions are my own. Any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. Excuse me, so thank you guys for using those if you'd like to. Again, just down in the description box um, under the title. Uh, let's see here. Oh my goodness, look at this little lady. <laughs> How cute. Let me get that open. So, um, treat bag. Let's see here. Again, Halloween related there. Again, real simple to make. That has the one main piece and then just the back piece. And then you have your little characters that you can create. So there's like a little witchy poo there. And we have the little pumpkin and a bat. Very simple. The bats, uh, it looks like it gets created by stamping and cutting. So a nice quick project on that one. And this one has uh, three different little layers. How cute is that for a card? Just to like layer it up with maybe some uh, dimensionals and everything. And then you have your little face. And then uh, the witch, again, just her little hair in the back. You got your hat with a band. Put it on, you know, her little face there. And then stamping and little cheeks if you want to add those. Really cute. And then again, just a simple bag with the acetate there. So we'll check that out in just a minute and they continue on here but it's basically just to close the bag there so very simple uh, a couple things on these kind of bags you can glue them shut of course that means it's a one-time use because you're going to tear it open you can use you know uh, magnets of course those are a little bit more um, costly but uh, uh, yeah so magnets cost a little bit more um, I would just grab some of that um, velcro from the dollar store maybe I'll bring one out today and maybe just cut it in half and use that um, to make even a good seal that is reusable and inexpensive. So we'll probably use that today. Um, okay, and then it comes with the acetate because it does have like a little opening in the bag right there. So we have acetate pieces, uh, the stamp set. We have no tricks, just treats, booze, spooky sweets, happy Halloween, lots of cute little, uh, little banner. Here's a treat for you. And then um, the die set, so again, that larger bag piece, the back, and then all the pieces for our characters. Again, really good size. I mean, look how big the hat is. Um, so it's a really nice uh, size project. Again, great for cards, too. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just grab some paper and we'll get started. So I just grab some fun Halloween colors. I think we'll do the witch since she has the um, most pieces, and that way you'll see how to create her. Okay, so um, for the bag itself... I think I'm going to use like this bright green. Why not? Maybe just fun colors of that one and this one. So I'll run those guys through. I want to see what this is for here. Those for as labels or however you want to use it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So I'll run these through and you know if you have the marquee uh, you have the cutting folder. The kits always come with a new cutting folder, but again, if you don't have the marquee, whatever machine you have that cuts thin metal dies, these will work in. Um, you know, I don't know if I want to do it this way and this way. It doesn't really matter, but either way, um, I'm going to trim this down just a little bit, and I'll just show you right quick. And I'll run that one through also. And this is just a folder I've used before. I just want to show you that you can use your folders over and over and over regardless of pretty much what they look like so I'll run that one through slowly for the camera and there that is the little oval aperture okay, and then I'll run this guy through and then it has the score lines and everything already built in there okay and I'll, like I said I'll run the other portion through there and then for my little character bring this over. So these are all new papers. Usually I just grab things from like my scrap uh, little pile here, but these are new. Um, so, oh, her little hat. Hello. I was going to just grab some. I don't see how big her hat is. Does that work? Okay, well I'll grab a scrap of black paper for her hat. Actually, look at that. That works. Okay. And then, um, you know, like a little orange band. That's uh, fine. I can do that with this one here and then her face I am going to do green just to bring that green back I thought that's cute so we'll do this piece here 
And if you want to give her cheeks, um, you know, they can be whatever color you like. I will go with a darker green, kind of like the show here. So I'm just going to grab a scrap of dark green paper and I'll run this through that. And then um, her little hair. And where is it? Right here. <laughs> How cute. And I will make her little hair uh, purple. Why not? Uh, I'll be right back. just want to show you. This is generally what I do whenever I have several pieces. I'll put as many as I can, even on a smaller folder like this guy. And you can run it through and you have all your little character pieces at once. Um, this one does have stamping on the face. If you want to stamp first and then do the face, you know, put the die over it. You can do that. Um, I'm cutting out the face first and then I'll stamp. But again, if you rather stamp the paper and then kind of eyeball where this is on top of that, you can definitely do that. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we have our pieces here. And just... We'll put the bag together, you know, I'm just kind of following along, but you can put it together whenever you like, of course. I'm just going to put a little glue here for the little hat band. And let's see where her little head goes. I would say her head kind of lines up with like where her the hair ends, where this can just tuck in there really nicely. Because of course you can put your hat wherever you like. You know, so that looks good. So let's do that. And then I'll stamp it. But again, if you want to stamp it first or however, I usually just kind of eyeball that part of it. <laughs> so we have that there. And then we have our little faces. So I'll take this guy and I am just going to go for it. But if you want to use a stamp position, you can definitely do that. And since I'm just going to go for it, I'm going to use VersaFine because it usually does details really, really well. First time out. And I'm definitely just eyeballing this. There. Nice firm pressure. So cute. Let me wipe that off there. And then we'll pop our little hat on again. You know, if this was like on a car, you can do some dimensionals. Obviously, you can do dimensionals if it's on this thing, too. You can just pop that up a little bit. But I'll just glue everything down. And then she has some little cheeks that I had cut out that we can place. That is so cute. So as far as the hat, you know, as high or as low as you like, whatever it is that you think looks good. Look at her. I mean, look at that. She's over three inches tall, just her little face there. And then some little cheeks. So let's just put a little glue here, a little glue there. Just a small dot. And... How <laughs> cute. That was like a really dark green, but that worked out really well. How cute is that? Look at her. Okay, so we have that. And then again, like I said, the pumpkins, you just layer it up pretty easy. Pop on your face. And then the other one, you just stamp it and cut it. And with this one, I probably would stamp the wings first. Go ahead and do that. And then put the little face on. Stamp the face afterwards. And all right. So we do have this here if you want to stamp on that. So what I will do is go ahead and do that. Uh... Just have this big guy, and since this is a larger stamp, I will put it on a stamp positioner. And I'm gonna grab like some purple ink or something fun like that. So we'll just stamp that right there. And let me grab some purple ink. I'll be right back. I have this ink here from Dime Price. It's kind of a light purple, so I'm probably gonna stamp it a couple times. So I'm just gonna ink that up and put this all the way to the corner. that. Oh, well, I kind of like the distressed look that looks like, but the Halloween stuff is so much fun because if it comes out a little distressed looking, that looks good. So it's fun. Uh, I think, well, maybe I'll do it one more time. That's a good amount of purple color. Again, for me, impression I'm using my hand today, I usually use my little stamping tool, but there we go. All right, let me clean this up and I'll be right back. So also in that step three, they're just telling you to go ahead and score everything. So I probably should have mentioned that. I would have done that off camera. So we're just gonna take all these guys and generally with bags, everything folds in towards the rough cut side, right? So I just turn this over. So this is the side that die was on that pushed in really nicely. And on that back side of that, we're doing all of our scoring. And 
I generally wait for the scoring of the gusset until I get there, but this little gusset part, it's like a little triangle. Let me see if we can see it right there and right there. But right now we can just give it a little training. Just kind of bend it. <laughs> That's how I'd get that going without too much. And then this guy, it just has a score line at the bottom. And then it has a double score line at the top because it's going to go over the two layers of what's up here. So they give you like a little, little space for that. Just a little minimal thing like that. Okay, and then we need a little piece of acetate, and it says to cut it with your paper trimmer. Of course, you can just eyeball it, but if you want to take this to your paper trimmer, then you're going to cut it to two and a quarter by three. So I'm going to maximize my little paper. It is, or acetate, it's five inches wide by four inches. So it's five by four. So you want two and a quarter by three. So you can definitely, you know, on the four inch side, cut it to three and then two and a quarter, you get two from this or however you want to cut it. But I will be right back. Turn that down. I still have these pieces. Again, another large piece for the next one. And then just a little extra piece there. And that's if you want to glue this whole thing. Now it's up to you. If you just want to cut that down and only cover the oval, then you have even more acetate to use, um, you know, at another time. But, uh, I just did what the instructions say. That way, um, you know, if you just do like a partial covering, it might be that your treats will poke it out or move it. So this way, it's covered from the very top, so it's harder for this to just kind of move away. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do real quick is grab, uh, while that's drying a little bit, is grab the... Um, Velcro I was talking about and I'll be right back. So we're still on the back side here. What I'm going to do is glue this together. Now you can turn it over obviously so you can see where you're putting your glue. But you are putting the glue definitely on one of the tabs. And then you're going to pop it over on the other side. So this little tab should be facing down here. Obviously this is the flap that's going to be up on top. And I'm just lining it up with these score lines. Making sure it looks nice. So right on the edge score line to score line here a little bit more that way there that looks pretty good so I'm gonna hold that until it's set up and I'll be right back okay that's pretty good and then basically what they're showing you here is to put the glue and then if you fold it over in half it'll be perfectly lined up so basically if this comes over to here to this tab right with all the scores being done it's a little I'm going to lay these guys down a little more flat. And there we go. Again, lining it up just to make sure it's still straight, looking good side to side. And you can just flatten it out like that. And then after a couple seconds, just make sure you didn't glue it completely shut, right? So just check that. And I'll be right back. So, um, yeah, so this is step seven. All you're going to do is pop it open a little bit and then push these guys in. So they're recommending to. Um, Put this larger flap down first, and then these two little side ones. I love this kind of mechanism because it just works, and look how cute. Again, my glue's a little bit wet there. Super cute. Okay, so unfortunately I don't have a lot of <laughs> Halloween candy yet. And my daughter was a little upset with me the other day. I took her candy to do a different review <laughs> to put some in. Excuse me, yes, my nephew just had a birthday party. Oh, grandnephew even. Oh my goodness. Where's, where did the years go? Anyway, Miranda was like, where's my candy? <laughs> I was like, oh, I have it. I'm sorry. So let's just pretend. I'm just putting a few different, like, smaller things in here. Um, let's pretend we have those guys in there, okay? So that's good candy. And definitely I would have probably put the uh, closure on first, but we're going to put the candy in. So we're going to go from there. So these are, yeah, just an expensive little Velcros from the dollar store. And what I usually do is I fold them in half just so they're together already. And then for this project, I mean, I wouldn't use a whole tab. I would just cut it in half. But whatever it is that you think you need to do, will be good. And let me take the stickiness off of, or the carrier off of one side. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pop out the candy just so I can really flatten it out. Okay. So let's have, well, you know what? I should put it on here, huh? That way we make sure that we are good. Just push it down on there. Sorry about the glare from the other plastic there. And then I'll just peel the carrier away. Bring this up here and close that up. 
give it a really good pinch, of course. Okay. So now it's reopenable or reusable, however you want to. At least it's, you know, you don't have to tear it open. And then again, you're going to place your little character wherever you would like. So if you want them down here, obviously it needs to touch the flap. Or you can do it completely separate from the flap or, you know, however you want to use that. So for now, I'm just going to put some glue pretty much all over that. And have our little character there. I'm going to hold that down for just a second. I'll be right back. And alternatively, you can also put the Velcro on her, right? Because she's stuck to the flap anyway. And then put the Velcro down here, wherever you like. It'll work out. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I have some images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. Thank you so much, Diane Press, for sending these items for review. Again, really cute. And then thinking outside of the gift bag, uh, you know, you can definitely use this on other projects. I think it's uh, really, really adorable. It's a nice Sorry, size, you know. Get too far. I already said my goodbyes, but I will redo this part. Um, Sorry for the rough edit. I forgot to measure this for you guys. So it is like two and three eighths inches wide there by one and three eighths. I would say at the base again. So two and three eighths by one and three eighths. And then it's the height. It is like three and a quarter inches tall. All right, guys. Sorry, guys. Okay, so thanks so much um, again, Diamond Press for sending these items for you. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll have the links in the description box. I'll have images coming up, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.